Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an I Read 5 in which my husband picks my romance novels. The idea for this video came to me, I would say like six months ago at this point. I've had these books for quite a while. Uh, we were actually waiting for a dinner reservation at uh, Yield Barnes & Noble. We were like trying to kill some time and I jokingly asked like, hey, would you pick out some romances for me? And I only gave him 10 minutes to do it. Not only did he not get a good, like a really good chance at picking things I would like. He... Oh, I was specifically <laughs> not going for Not that. going for things that yeah. I would like. He also uh, probably doesn't remember what he picked because we picked these books so long ago. But uh, right now he's gonna actually try to tell us why he picked these books for uh, me to read and then I'm gonna read them. And it's just gonna be a fun time, you know? And just FYI, it doesn't really matter how long ago it was. I mostly didn't have a reason for picking them besides they either looked fun or they looked like you would really hate them, so. So that's what we're working with. So let's get through this five book stack. You can tell us why you picked these and then we get into the vlog portion of the video. First up we have Wicked Cowboy Wolf by Kate Ballinger. What really drew you to this book? Well, I mean, name? so like obviously the name. You also have to understand most of these I'm seeing just from the spine. I see Sorry. Wicked Cowboy Wolf. That just sounds like a good time. Was this a good time? You'll find out. It was a time. He's, he's ready to go. He's ready to be wicked. The Infamous Duchess by Sophie Barnes. This is one of the picks that I was looking for like a bit of diversity, you know? Okay, okay. You uh, didn't want it to all be I did cowboy try to, shifter romances. I did try to give you a little bit of variety, you know? Variety was had. I can yes. attest to that. I've already read all the books. Let me let reference. me look at this one because, you know, if I'm being completely honest with you, don't know what called to me, what spoke I think to me in this book. I know what called to you. You picked this book up, briefly looked at it, and I was like, that's already something that I want to read. We're getting that one. So, oh, okay. I don't think you had that much say in this one. However... Because if I'm being quite honest with you, this looks like every romance novel. Hot and Badgered, baby. Hot and Badgered. Just like Wicked Cowboy Wolf, this one just really sounded like a good time. It sounded like, at the very least... <laughs> the very least interesting read. Um, yeah. You know, I, I know that there's like shifter romances, but with badgers? Also, I didn't notice new. until just now, but the cover, like you can see the badger fur in the background. Yeah, wait, did you not know that that was badger fur? No, I, I just, I don't know. I thought it was just like a creative little like. Oh yeah, no, I knew. So. That's why I had to go for it. I'll be reading this. Badger centric. Next up, we have one that I think like looks the least scary. We have Love Scenes by Bridget Morrissey. It really reminds me of the cover of uh, It Happened One Summer. That's fair. Yes, I would agree. These like illustrated covers are definitely more popular nowadays. Yeah, it's kind of like cute. It seemed like a little fun. And I knew that I was giving you a couple of books that might be a struggle for you to get through. And this one seemed <laughs> like it might be a little less of a struggle, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see about that. Mastered by My Banks. Well, like I said, I was trying to give you some variety. These other ones, I had, you know, some shifter, I had some cowboy, I had like a duke, I had kind of a more like contemporary, mm -hmm. and then, you know, got to throw a little, maybe some, some BDSM. Yeah. Um, got some spikes <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> this yeah. is one of the ones that it seemed like you might not enjoy. And so you and said, so let's I do it. it. Yes. I am scared. But what I'm not scared of? My internet safety because I use NordVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that protects you online and basically hides your location and information from people who want to do bad things with it, which I personally love, especially when I'm traveling. I personally always get a little bit sketched out when I have to use public Wi-Fi, especially in like an airport, but I know NordVPN has my back and is protecting all of my data from people who, again, might want to do bad things with it. And when I'm not traveling, NordVPN is still super useful because it allows me to watch shows on streaming services that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. Essentially, the way a VPN works is you get to kind of like pick what location you're showing as being in. So even though I am here in Texas right now, I could set my VPN location to let's say like France. And I could watch everything on a streaming service that's available in France that isn't necessarily available in my current location. And I personally love that, especially as I'm trying to work through all of the movies that I want to watch in October. I have so many spooky things that I'm really excited to watch and NordVPN helps me watch all of those things that are not available in my country. And unlike some VPNs I've tried in the past, NordVPN is so quick thanks to NordLinks. So I don't have to deal with buffering when I'm streaming. I feel like in 2022, we should all be using a VPN, and NordVPN is my personal favorite. If you want to try NordVPN risk-free, visit nordvpn.com slash Chandler and use code Chandler to get a discount. For the price of a coffee, you'll be protecting yourself and hopefully streaming fun stuff like me this spooky season. Now, without further ado, let's get into the vlog portion of this video and see if any of Hayden's picks uh, worked out. <laughs> I am woefully underprepared to film this first clip, but I just feel like that's going to be the theme of this video. My camera's going to die soon, but I'm going to tell you about The Infamous Duchess because I'm 50% into this one. This is the one that I decided to start with because I feel like it is the most prominent 
promising in that uh, I would have picked this up on my own. <laughs> I actually told Hayden, I remember whenever we were in Barnes & Noble, hey, that's a good one. You know, like he picked this one up and I was like, yes, let's do that because I had already been kind of interested in the story and it's not disappointing me, I will say. So this book is about, and I oh, I never remember the name, so I always have to like look at the back cover. This is about Vi Viola. I always want to say Viola, like the instrument. The Duchess of Tremaine, she ended up marrying a really old duke. <laughs> he has recently passed away and so she's using her inheritance, which is like basically all of his money. He doesn't want to give it to his son. Uh, she's using all of this money to put into a hospital because she's a good woman and she works side by side with this doctor who is like trying to like start up a practice and I don't know just do a lot of good in his community and so that's kind of like her goal. She works side by side with him. She's kind of a nurse and uh, she's just living her life until Duke's son decides to come back and he is trying to say that she doesn't deserve the inheritance. She's a money grubber. Like she's not a good girl. This is obviously going to provide a problem because this money has already been invested. Like it's going to a good place but the money's already invested. But this guy is an asshole and so he's coming back to claim his money. He is not the love interest <laughs> of the story. The love interest of the story is a guy who ends up, I think, getting injured from a duel. And Henry, the hero of the story, he is basically nursed back to health by Lady Viola. And I just, I like their, their dynamic so far. Really appreciated, I guess, like the beginning scenes where he is trying to kind of woo her from his sickbed. I think it's kind of sweet. She's like had a really hard life and you get to kind of learn some of the struggles that she's gone through and some of the abuse and trauma that she's had, unfortunately. And we get to see how Henry is just very accepting of her. He wants to help her out of whatever bad situation she's in. He helps her get an attorney to kind of fight the the douchebag son who he used to be friends with. He's like, you know what? Fuck this guy. He's not a cool guy. We're gonna go after him and make sure that you get to keep your money and your inheritance that the duke that you married like left for you. I don't know. It's good. I am appreciating the moments, I guess, of tenderness between Henry and Viola. I was concerned that this was going to be too action heavy, but I'm enjoying it. It's also not smut heavy either, which I'm kind of appreciating. Don't get me wrong. I love smut, but I actually just uh, finished watching Crystal's video. She always, I feel like, has such insightful things to say on romance as a genre in general, but she especially really hit home for me today when she was talking about how she just hasn't had a lot of good romance reads this year, and I feel the same way. I feel like a lot of stuff being published nowadays is so smut heavy that we're not getting a lot in the way of emotional relationship development, and I'm sorry, but like I need both in a story. So I definitely feel the sexual tension and the chemistry, but I'm not feeling bogged down by just like endless sex scenes here, which is good because it fits this story. Our heroine unfortunately got taken advantage of, and so our hero is not trying to just like jump into bed with her and putting his own needs first. He's putting her needs first, which I, I'm i liking. It's pretty good. I don't think this is going to be like a five-star read for me. This is not the most standout historical I've ever read, but it's definitely solid. There's not a lot that I'm objecting to at this point. Yes, I do wish that it was like maybe more uplifting, but I think that's just simply the mood that I'm in. I want something that um, feels a little happier because, you know, I've had a shitty couple of weeks, but this is actually like brightening my my day a little bit despite all of that. Also, the guy, like the, the model, I don't know if you can tell, but he kind of reminds me of Spike from Buffy, but like IRL because he has dark hair IRL. Anyway, I'm going to finish this off and then I will give you my final thoughts. We are going to be reading a lot today and you're going to see a lot of this sweatshirt. So like, sorry in advance, but I have a lot of romance to read and a lot of other things to read before the year is over. Okay. Lots of updates. I am extremely congested though. So I'm so sorry about my voice. I am finished with this book and 50% into this one. So let's talk. So I finished The Infamous Duchess earlier today and uh, it's kind of a toughie for me because I don't feel like the romance really fell apart in this book in any regard. I, I did really end up liking Viola and Henry's relationship. I thought it was really cute. I felt like he was really supportive the entire way, but I feel like evil triumphed a little bit too hard in this book. And yes, eventually there is a happy ending and does get his comeuppance, the, the douchebag who ends up like taking advantage of her and like trying to steal all of her money, whatever. Yes, he does get what's coming to him, but I almost feel like it was too little too late in some ways. And I feel like it brought the overall tone of the story down. I understand you want to have a plot line, but I feel like that one probably could have wrapped up a little bit sooner and there could have been like a second conflict that was like keeping them apart for a different reason. I feel like it could have been more compelling in a way to have these two get married. Uh, the, the reason they get married in this book anyway, I, I didn't tell you they get married, but the reason that these two do get married is to kind of bolster Viola's case against the guy that was like trying to steal all of her money. That is unsuccessful, but that happens at like the 50 or 60% mark of this book. I think it would have been more compelling for that to happen like farther down the road and for her to like either lose or win the case regardless, but then the actual conflict between the hero and heroine being like, she doesn't know if she wants to be with him after the case is over. Maybe that actually makes the plot worse now that I'm saying it out loud. I just feel like something was missing here. I feel like it didn't totally work for me. This is definitely like a good three-star romance. It was very solid. I feel like if you're looking for a hero who just is so sweet and supportive, isn't pushy at all, and is like kind of sexy, I feel like this is a good romance to pick up, but I feel like the kind of person that I would recommend 
recommend that kind of hero too. Maybe you wouldn't want to pick up this book because I don't consider it like a safe book. We do have, again, like a heroine who's been through some shit and her trauma is like brought up again because she has to like face her abuser. So I don't know. I don't know. It was fine. I'm glad that I read this. I've never read any Sophie Barnes before and I don't know. It's, it's, it's a pretty cover. So I actually might keep this one. I feel like my instinct with most mass markets after I'm done is just to like toss them unless it's a favorite. And even though this wasn't a favorite, I don't know. Like I just, I like it. I think it's cute and I feel like I could actually see myself rereading this or like giving it to a friend, loaning it to a friend. So I feel like in terms of historicals, this was not a bad pick on the part of Hayden. Not that he like, you know, really knew anything about these books when he was picking them up, but pretty solid. And I feel like in comparison to the books that I pick out for myself, like, I mean, I would have picked this for myself. A book I would not have picked out for myself. Wicked Cowboy Wolf. Okay. Going from very much inside my comfort zone to like very much not inside my comfort zone. I just don't tend to pick up like cowboy kind of westerny romances. I do like shifter romances. It's been a while since I've like really delved into that side of paranormal. But anyway, this book is about our main character, Rogue, and our heroine, May. In this world, I think this is like the third book a series. They're standalones, but I feel like I probably would have benefited from reading the other two to like understand the world better. But from my understanding, in this world we have humans, we have vampires, we have werewolves, and these books follow werewolves who are like the good guys. And there are different packs, and there are wolves who are not part of a pack. And those are called rogue wolves. And our hero is like the kind of leader, I guess you could say, of the rogue wolves. He has taken it upon himself to help a lot of the rogue wolves, even though they're like not in like a pack system. He tries to take care of them. And our heroine is the daughter of a a pack leader. These two kind of come into contact <laughs> when our heroine is saved by our hero. She gets captured, I guess, by like vampires who want to steal her blood to make a serum. In this world, vampires feed on humans, but that sustenance is not really that satisfying to them. And they can't at this point, I guess, or like historically, they've not been able to consume werewolf blood because it's poisonous to them until they develop a serum that makes it to where they can drink werewolf blood. And they have created the serum from our heroine's um, blood. And now that they've created a serum from her blood, they want to ensure that she is deceased so that no one can create like an anti-serum, like an anti-venom kind of thing. I guess the vampire's goals is to inject all werewolves with this um, material so that they can feed on werewolves forever or some shit. I'm not entirely sure. And all of that happened off page, if that makes sense. All of that happened before the book started. And now we have Rogue coming back into May's life and being like, hey, um, there's some people after you and I want to help you because I don't want this to happen to like my rogue wolves. The rogue wolves are, are going to be people that are most impacted, I guess you could say, by this serum. And so he's like, hey, I'm gonna hide you for a little bit until we can develop an anti-serum, an anti-venom. So you gotta come with me. I'm taking you off this compound that you live on with all of your other fellow like gray wolves. That's like the pack there in the gray wolves. Yeah. And she's like, okay, like I'll do it for the good of my family. But she's also like kind of resistant because she's a wolf herself. And me, me, me. This is him. This is Rogue. An additional conflict, I guess, in this book too, is that technically May and Rogue knew each other a long time ago, but Rogue has been through like a pretty rough past. He has a bunch of scars. He looks different. It's been many years since they've met. And so May doesn't recognize him, but he recognizes her. And he had a crush on her back in the day. And so like, you know, there's some sexual tension there, or at least on the part of him. He likes him too, but like doesn't know that, that he is who he who he is. And all of this is sounding confusing. It's kind of because it is. I, again, kind of wish I had read, well, I don't wish that I had read the other books in the series, but it definitely would have given me more context going into this one. I'll also say that I have been reading it on my phone because for some reason, the typeface on this is just not, it's just not it for me. Since I am the queen of excuses, I was like, you know what? I need to just like switch how I'm reading this. Otherwise I'm never going to finish this book. It's like the font's too small and also I just hate the font. So anyway, I'm reading this on my phone. It's not bad. I feel like the sexual tension and sexual chemistry between May and Rogue, like I definitely feel it. I like that they have a past. I wish that that past would be revealed quickly. I understand that that's supposed to be like a point of tension or whatever. That's kind of the hidden identity stuff that doesn't totally work for me. I don't really like when it's unbalanced, when one person knows the other person's identity but the other person doesn't know the other person's identity. Does that make sense? Like, I don't like that he knows who she is, but she doesn't know who he is. I feel like it creates kind of like a weird power imbalance there. And I also just feel like it's um, more of a lie at that point too. I think the story could actually be bolstered by May finding out Rogue's identity and then kind of having to work through those complicated feelings. Because just because she knows who he is doesn't mean that she necessarily like wants to immediately get in bed with him. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess they've kind of already like hooked up in a way, but I think it would create an interesting conflict because the reason that they like separated or the reason that they left each other's lives is complicated and I think working through that would be an interesting 
an interesting conflict. I'm talking way too much about this book, but um, it's not bad. I feel like at this point, it's like a three star. I d again, this is this is not a five star. It's not five star material, but I have been pleasantly surprised with it. I think the main thing that's keeping this from being like a higher rated book because I really like stuff like this typically. I like um, a paranormal with a good plot line. I like a well fleshed out world, which this, I mean, attempts to do. I think my issue is that both May and Rogue don't seem particularly developed. We are getting to know Rogue more. I am kind of liking him and the way that he's treating some of the like orphan children that he's taking care of on his ranch, which is really sweet. But I feel like May doesn't really have much of a personality or um, much to say. I think her whole thing is like, I feel like I'm trapped. I feel caged. I don't like to live under my brother's thumb. I want to live my life to the fullest. Like, okay, girl, I guess. But like, what is your, like, what do you want to do? Like, she, she doesn't even know what she wants out of life, but she just knows she wants to be free. And I guess I get it, whatever. But it's just like, it's not compelling to me. It's not interesting to me. I need more from her to be an interesting character. And like, she's also not having a lot of, I, I would say, emotions and feelings about what's happening to her in this moment. Like, obviously she's kind of scared and she wants her brother to be safe but that's it. Like, that's pretty much it from her. I want some like complexity of emotion so that the tension between Rogue and May feels a little bit more like, ooh, okay, like how's this gonna work? Right now it's just kind of like, y'all are in close proximity and like you wanna fuck each other, it's gonna happen. It just doesn't feel um, high stakes at all, but it's not like an unenjoyable read. I guess I am kind of curious to see what happens. Not much progress has been made even in the plot line at this like 50% mark. Like technically we know that the vampires are after May, but we have not really seen them since the very beginning of the book when she escapes with Rogue. Like he saves her and, and takes her away. I don't know. It's just like, we pick up the pace a little bit because I don't know how you're gonna cram all that needs to happen in this last like 50%. I guess since it's a series, I can't expect that like everything is going to get resolved in terms of the plot, but like, I don't know. Also, she has a, a teacup pig as a pet, which I, I didn't think those actually existed. I thought like, that was like debunked a while ago. Anyway, getting through these books. Okay, so I have updates. I just finished actually Wicked Cowboy Wolf and last night I got 50% into love scenes, but I'm gonna talk about them sequentially just to make things easier. So Wicked Cowboy Wolf ended up being not my favorite. I think I'm gonna give this one two stars. I'm not like shocked or anything that this didn't work out well, but I think my big issue with this is kind of what I stated last time. I feel like this book was like maybe a little bit too predictable and I also wish again that the reveal of the hidden identity or like other identity of Rogue aka Jared had been revealed earlier. It was something that was used right at the end of the book and it wasn't really resolved in a way that I thought was good. It was like our heroine was like, oh my god, I'm just so excited to see you. I love you so much. And that's kind of it. And I feel like the final showdown and or like the final getting of this like serum, anti-venom, anti-whatever the f I just didn't, it was not, it was not good. It was um, pretty lackluster and I just feel like there was like too much misogyny and like violence towards women in this as well. Like, I don't know, I guess that's like not completely out of the realm of possibility for a romance, but like, I just don't want that to happen as often as it did in this one. I mean, it's not egregious or anything and I'm not saying that it wasn't like, fought against, but I just, I don't know. It just like wasn't my favorite. <laughs> I will say though, in reading this, I am more inspired, I would say, to pick up Paranormal now because it's like once you read something that's like not great, I think it can either lead you to want to read more in that genre that is good or it can like lead you away from the genre. And since I like love Paranormal and urban fantasy romance at my core, <laughs> that's definitely like what got me into romance in the first place. It makes me want to pick up more of these definitely in 2023. Like my reading schedule for this year, it's, it's booked and busy. I don't have time for anything like new and fresh and exciting. Like I know what I'm reading and that's it. It makes me sad that I can't pick up more paranormal because that's like my favorite thing to read in the fall. So anyway, this was not great, but it wasn't the worst thing I'd ever read. And given like the cover, I, I kind of assumed this would be worse. I'm not like mad that I read this. Was it sort of a waste of money? Certainly because I will be unhauling this, but anyway. Let's move on to a book that I was like pretty, I would say wary to go into despite this looking like a like, fun and zesty rom-com. I feel like I had seen this a couple of years ago. I think this came out in like 2019 or something. I'd seen it a couple of years ago. Oh, just kidding. 2021. So just last year. I saw this on Goodreads and the reviews were sort of middling. I think the overall average rating for this book is under four stars. So it was just one of those like traditionally published cartoon, I don't know, cover books that I was like not super excited to pick up. And so I just, I mean, I, I, I didn't. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize all of my cats were in this room. I love that. All right. I'm going to show you. Sorry. They're cute. We have Teddy drinking water. We have Pickles being Pickles, which, you know, is a lot. Let me just tell you, he's a lot to handle. And then we have Pepper using the litter box or attempting to. So anyway, it's, it's a fun time in here. Let's talk about this book. I was hesitant going into this because I didn't expect it to be very good and is different than I expected, which I'm actually kind of appreciating. Like looking at this cover and like reading the synopsis of this book, I assume this is going to be a typical rom-com, very like surface level, not a lot to it. And I'm not saying this is like the most deep emotional book I've ever read, but tonally it's more in line with the kinds of things I typically like. So this book is actually blurbed by Rachel Lynn Solomon who wrote the X Talk. And I think if you've read that book, you kind of understand the tone of this one. It is a 
rom-com kind of that is not very comedic. It's just a romance between two people who have pasts and who have issues uh, set in like a more fun setting, I guess. So in this book, we have our main character, Sloane. She comes from a line of like pretty famous actors. Her mom and dad, um, I think we're both famous actors, maybe directors as well. And they got a divorce when she was pretty young and they have both like remarried since. I think she has two like full siblings and then a couple of half siblings. And they're this big like blended family. And this blended family comes together to create this, I think like World War II, yeah, era romance together. It's gonna be a movie. Sloane's mom's gonna star in it and they wrote the lead part of the movie for Sloan to fulfill but because she's stubborn she decides she doesn't want to actually fulfill that role. We don't really know exactly like the details of why she decides to turn down this part that was written specifically for her. I think she just kind of like wanted to strike out on her own and not be a nepotism baby <laughs> but after a series of events she ends up becoming a producer on this show and having to work with one of her you know professional nemeses who is named Joseph I believe. Joseph Donovan who is a pretty famous actor kind of a heartthrob that everybody likes. He's Irish and he is the lead in this movie and they have worked together before on a rom-com and apparently it was a really shitty professional working situation because Joseph is an alcoholic and he was drinking heavily on the set of that movie. He did not respect people's time and he wasn't a very nice guy um, in the movie that they did together like a while ago and so she's not excited to have to help him especially when he can't remember his lines when he first comes onto set. He's no longer in the active throes of addiction but he I think he's just like stressed or he is um he's really excited about this movie and he just he's not really like nailing it and so Sloane's job is to kind of help him learn his lines but then Sloane's role kind of changes as the book carries on because because the lead actress in the movie was kind of miscast, to be honest. They fire her and then Sloane takes her part instead. And so now she's going to actually have to work um, against Joseph or like work facing, jo I don't know. They're, they're gonna be scene partners, I guess you could say. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this book. I think it is entertaining in the way that I need right now. I have been kind of in a weird reading place because I don't want to read things that are overly cheery because it feels kind of false to me right now as I'm dealing with grief, but I also don't really want to read things that are overly depressing. So I feel like this kind of strikes the perfect balance in terms of tone. I don't know that I like totally love the romance between Joseph and Sloane. I feel like I like them as friends for sure, but I'm not really feeling like the sexual chemistry and the sexual component to their, you know, relationship yet. It makes sense because like we haven't had any sex scenes yet, but I'm just, I feel like when they happen, it's going to feel kind of out of nowhere. The one thing I am really appreciating, I will say, is that Sloane's relationship with her family is really complex and interesting, and it reads as very genuine to me. I thought that this was going to fall into, you know, certain tropes or, like, certain cliches and cheesiness. Having, you know, this girl come from a, a famous family, I just assumed everybody was going to be an asshole and or, like, flighty. I just, I assumed people would fall into certain archetypes, and they really haven't. I think hearing about Sloane's family dynamics and how complicated this blended family is, I think, lends an air of reality to the story that I wasn't expecting. And I do actually really like that. I like Sloane's sister Taylor. I like Sloane's mom. I think she's an interesting character. Um, I think she's like just now finding out that her mom's actually bisexual, which I think is really cool. I feel like we don't often have parent sexuality coming into play in stories, so I am appreciating that, I guess. Hello, would you like to make your debut? This is Pickles. He is my my shadow. Follows me everywhere. He's quite annoying, but he's so cute. Okay, anyway, back to the topic at hand, sorry. This is feeling very like three star to me at this point. I feel like unless the romantic relationship develops into something truly special, it's probably gonna stay a three star in my head because... I don't know. It's like, I'm not hating it. It's totally fine. But this isn't like the most memorable, interesting romance ever. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off. And then um, I'm gonna get into Mastered. So when I get back to you, I'll hopefully have finished this and gotten 50% into this. But like, honestly, RAP me because I'm scared. If you didn't know, Maya Banks writes um, BDSM smut. I mean, you would you would know that because you watched the intro to this video. But okay, anyway, I'm gonna ugh, go. So we're gonna talk about some smut that Hayden picked out for me. And I'm glad that he's here for this because he did this to me. He gets to bear witness. All right, where should we begin? Okay. So, I did finish Love Scenes. It wasn't great. I think I'm gonna give this one two stars. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be at least a three star because it had a really promising start. I really, I was going to say I really cared about our heroine. I wanted to care about our heroine, but I feel like everything kind of took a tumble whenever she steps into the role that was like abandoned, I guess, by the original actress. Like I was rooting for her to get this role. I was rooting for her to like take her rightful place with her family and do all this sh But my issue is that she just started like f***ing her coworker like very early on. The romance didn't really come in until later. It's like we're friends and then we have sex and then after that we're going to develop a relationship and and that's it. We've seen recently how fucking your coworkers goes. Bringing the try guys into it. I like it. I like it. Okay. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Um, and it's a very forgettable read, I would say, ultimately. Like, I, I feel like it had promise, and yet it fumbled the bag. So, moving on. I brought three books with me because there's a lot to talk about. Mastered. Did I pick this as well? You, you picked all of these, babe. I do not remember picking this one. <laughs> Let's let me talk see, about let, it. Let me see the cover really quick. Uh, it looks like... Okay, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I would have picked that. We're filming this before we film the intro to this video, for reference. I mean, if anyone cares. I DNF'd this book. I 
<laughs> where, what was it? Was it where that bad? Where to begin? Okay, so this book's about our main character, Evangeline, right? She has recently been pumped and dumped by her boyfriend. He, like, really wanted to get Cootie, um, so he gets with her because she's really unattainable, and then he immediately dumps her. And at the very beginning of the story, Evangeline's friends are like, hey, girl, we know that he goes to this exclusive club that, like, almost no one can get into, but we have a way in. You should go to the club and show him what he's missing. And so she does that, and in doing so, like, she sees him with another girl. She's not surprised. She doesn't really want to get back with him. He, like, walks up to her and is like, why are you dressed like a slut? And he uh, tries to, like, attack her, I guess, while he's with another woman. Like, he brings her with him, and, and he's, like, all up in Evangeline's face. You're not the girl that I had sex with and took advantage of. I It, it was really something, really a great start to a book. But of course, things go in a positive direction for our girl. She ends up getting picked up by stalker extraordinaire. Uh, what's this man's name? Drake. It is Drake. Okay, so Drake is the owner of the club. He likes to watch people on his cams in the club. He notices this girl getting taken advantage of. He sends his little lackeys to, like, collect this girl and bring her to him. Drake really is the kind of man to take advantage of. So Drake brings her to his lair and he's like yo i know this man didn't treat you right he didn't know what a gem you are i've never met you but i think you're hot can you spare a crumb of cookie and she does he has himself a full meal deal combo and she has never uh arrived shall we say before and i guess from there they enter into a sexual relationship i dnf'd it at this point because that made you dnf it, it was the writing that really did it in for me, okay, right? Just so not very good. So this, I think, was published in, like, 2015, yeah, which was, like, the height of the Christian Grey era. There's only so much of that I can take. Christian Grey looked tame and, like, emotional compared to Drake in this story. Granted, I didn't read very far. I'm sure he has some tragic backstory that we're supposed to understand makes him the way that he is. <laughs> However, couldn't get on board with it. At the very beginning of the book, <laughs> I forgot his whole little introduction, which is fucked up, too. He is, like, walking into his club, and he gets, like, stopped by... He gets stopped by worker and she is like hey i would like die to service you like i am so into you and he's like i don't have to pay for my women do you think that i would pay for my women and he like goes on this tirade to this poor girl who's just trying to make a, you know quick a buck he goes inside and like he has this whole inner monologue about how he is too good too amazing for someone to do this to him he's like i can't believe that she thinks that i would stoop that low i never have to pay anyone i want i can have and it just felt gross obviously. So that's like the introduction we get to him. And then he like steals that girl basically from his club and is like, I've been watching you on my cameras. I didn't really like it. It didn't feel so nice. Yeah. And I know it was just going to be a train wreck. Also, I know it was going to be a train wreck because I looked on Goodreads and even like Fifty Shades and Bared to You by Sylvia Day, they have good reviews. Like they have people who enjoy them. And honestly, I think both of those are like kind of funny reads. Like I would read those again. This wasn't funny. This wasn't funny enough to be like a read that I would continue on with. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. even, it wasn't camp. It was just like, this isn't good. I mean, I'm glad to be supporting an author writing books. I'm glad that we, I'm not glad that we bought this to be honest, but I'm going to pretend that I'm glad that we bought this let's move on to a book that is also chaos did um, you finish this one i'm 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 in the middle of reading this one which is why i'm talking about it right now i know we just went through a few books but because i dnf that i thought we'd get that out of the way hot and badgered i'm like 10 percent into this one i'm listening to the audiobook and this is actually like kind of fun it's about our main character charlie who is a half badger honey badger specifically <laughs> for some reason in this world i guess like if you've got a human form, then interspecies breeding doesn't matter. I'm not really sure, but all of her siblings have like different mixes. I'm not really sure what her mix is. She's like part honey badger, part something else. And her two sisters are as well. At the beginning of the story, she's on the run because someone is trying to murder her. Also her sisters. So she has to break one of her sisters out of um, a mental hospital. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Um, it's been a thrill ride. Let me so tell you. So none of them are, none of them are actually badgers. They're honey badger shifters. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a shifter romance. Sorry, I didn't really make that clear. I thought it was clear. But. Oh, it's just not to me. I don't I don't know the genres, you know? Okay, the synopsis says, It's not every day that a beautiful naked woman falls out of the sky and lands face first on Grizzly Shifter Berg Dunn's hotel balcony. Definitely, they don't usually hop up and demand his best gun. Berg gives the lady a grizzly-sized t-shirt and his cell phone, too. Just on style points. And then she's gone, taking his XXXL heart with her. By the time he figures out if she's a honey badger shifter, it's too late. Oh, so she's a honey badger shifter. He's a grizzly bear shifter. Yeah, I thought he was going to be the honey the honey badger shifter. Same. That's like, a, it just, it leads you to believe that. But he's not. He's a grizzly. And oh. I guess but what's well, weird... that's less fun for me, honestly. What's weird to me is, like, she falls onto his balcony and then after that immediately goes to her trying to break out her sister from a mental hospital with her other sister in Switzerland. I don't know. It's very weird. Uh, but they're on the run. I guess their dad, like, got into some shit and is, like, putting their lives at, at stake. Got into a badger trap. I guess so. And so, uh, you know, that's where we're at. I mean, 
it is all action, let me tell you. I'm not mad at it. It is a little bit confusing, I think. I feel like Goodreads is a little misleading because it has this marked as the first book in a series, but this is like the first book of a spin-off series, um, kind of. It's technically the 18th book in like an overarching shifter series. I guess this is like the Honey Badger, sort of like. Well, yeah, it's, it's it says right here, the Honey, Honey Badger, Badger Chronicles. Chronicles. Which is fine, except for, you know, I'm thrown into this world and I really don't know what the hell's going on. Um, it, do you think you're supposed to? I feel like I am supposed to. If you to. read the 17 books preceding, do you think you would get it? I think I would get it. And it's not that I don't get it. It's just like, wow, we're like moving quickly and I don't know who these people are. And what that's if I fine. read this whole series? What if I get really into... Wait, what is the larger series? If this is the Honey Badger Chronicles... Uh, it's, it's something Shifters, I guess. I don't know. I looked it up online. It's, it's called like the Shifter series or something. Oh, okay. Like other, other Shifters. I feel like Hayden would be into, like, a good paranormal fantasy romance. I feel like we need to read one. Living, laughing, loving. This is the last book that I have to read for this video, though. So I'm going to go home and finish this off, I guess. Um, excited to see how... This... How hot and badgered you get yeah, by the end of it. with Berg and Charlie. I don't think Berg is a particularly sexy name. No, Berg Dunn? Berg Dunn. If you're wondering about my final thoughts on hot and badgered, I'm sorry to tell you I DNF this book. I tried. I tried my hardest. I got, like, 20% into the audiobook, and it was just too chaotic for me. I really really think that to enjoy this spinoff series, you would have to have read the prior 17 books in the series. Like I was telling Hayden, I think this is like the first book in the Honey Badger Chronicles, but the 18th book actually in the Smith Shifter series. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, I just, I quickly Goodread searched it and that's kind of what I found out. I was also reading some reviews just to kind of get a feel for if this was something I wanted to continue, if the romance really develops. And apparently this is very much like a family saga comedy and there's only one smutty scene and there's there's not very much like romantic development between Berg and Charlie. And I'm sorry, like the whole reason I'm picking up a romance is for the romance. And if it's not going to be in there, I'm not that interested. Um, it'd be one thing if it were like chick lit women's fiction without, you know, a ton of like more intimate moments, shall we say. But this isn't even that. This is just like chaos family drama. And it's about a family that I just don't care about. So I think I feel confident in DNFing this book. And it feels bad to DNF two books for a video, but this video is already like kind of long, longer than it probably should be given how little I've read for it. And I think the whole point of this was just an experiment to see if, I don't know, in random selection, I guess by Hayden, I could find some romances to love. And while I didn't love any of these, I'm actually like not upset with how this experiment went because immediately after deciding to DNF this book, I went on my Kindle and I found a couple of romances that I'm just so excited to read. So if anything, I think this like sparked my interest again in romance and in reading. I just haven't been in much of a reading mood these past few weeks for various different reasons, but now I'm just like very excited and I feel like a renewed vigor, I guess, to find romances that like really do work for me. <laughs> It's like once you read a few duds, you're like, okay, I can find some good stuff now. I can do this. None of the books were absolutely awful. Um, well, except maybe that Maya Banks one. And I actually would recommend The Infamous Duchess if you have read any Sophie Barnes or like are interested in a good historical romance. Everything else is kind of a pass, which, you know, kind of sucks a little bit. I did kind of, I guess, deep in my heart hold out hope that we could find a five star or a four star read. Uh, but even though that didn't happen, I mean, I had a good time with this. I think it was a fun experiment and uh, maybe in the future with some more thought, Hayden could select good romances for me in the future. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, like maybe Hayden picking my KU romances or something. And I would actually give him like the opportunity to like look at the synopses and like pick something he thinks I would like. So maybe I'll do something like that in the future. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. But uh, I had a really good time doing this. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you all had a, a good time. I love you all so much. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time.